Happy Monday. Welcome to Exiles TV. Kevin Gallagher. That's me. Bill Perpita. Yeah, that's him. And in about an hour, Clarence Bugs. That's right. He's over there. You can't see him. For those of you that are still kind of not to quite, because there's only one full week of this new thing, but you know, under you know behind our belts here. But uh, we have uh, switched the lineup a little bit. Uh, whereas we'll be doing a one-hour program on weekdays at ten, and Clarence Bugs will be doing a one-hour program following us weekdays at eleven. So you get that much more Clarence, and God help you, that much more us. Yes, indeed. Well, today is your choice. You get to pick. Columbus Day or Indigenous Peoples Day? I'm going to go with Columbus Day. Uh, you know, I don't see anybody ever going, it's Indigenous Peoples Day. We're having a sale. You know. Uh, Come buy a mattress for Indigenous Peoples Day. I, I just. Uh, Never going to happen. You know. At, at, at <laughs> Indigenous Peoples Day. Here's the whole thing. This, of all the shut up and get back in the truck things, this is the biggest. I mean. They don't even have enough people to whine enough to be heard. And, and this is, I right, name a day, name a day after them, and shut up and get back in the truck. You I've know, often wondered, when you get down to the truth, the facts of Columbus, why, why did we make such a big deal out of it in the United States? Columbus didn't discover the United States of America. He, he discovered the Bahamas. He discovered the Bahamas. He discovered Central America. He, you know, he, he, he discovered the Caribbean. Uh, he didn't. He wasn't of any particular impact on but the continental United States. It led to the exploration of the North American continent. It led to the eradication of native people by mostly by sexually transmitted disease. Mm, clap. Well, the deer eradication. Clap for the wolf man. Yeah. Uh, but, well, here's the whole deal. You know, I, I. You know, all this. The indigenous native people have their own government and all that, except when they need something, and then they call the FBI. <laughs> okay, it, this is the biggest festering pile of crap. You lost. You lost big. You you had the high ground. You had the advantage of the terrain. You had superior numbers, and you got your panties kicked all over the damn continent. Stop whining. By Live the way, with it. if you watch Discovery Channel very often or Science Channel, you know that. There's a pretty good argument to be made that the indigenous peoples of America, of North America, were not indigenous at all. They migrated here just like we did. They just got here earlier. But either way, they still got their butts kicked all over the planet. That's what's relevant here. You know, uh, it, well, you know, we did have a little thing like superior firepower and technology going for us. Well, whose fault is that? You know, all these people, oh, you enslaved well, you know. our people, you came over with guns. Well, wait a minute, we all, we all happened at the same time. A bunch of us gave you guns. You know, we all happened at the same time, why didn't you invent bigger guns? Oh, that's right, you were chewing betel leaf. And you were smoking ganja. Or you were inventing your own wow. type of... Well, come on, seriously. Wow. Am I wrong? <laughs> there goes the Native American vote for Bill. <laughs> well, I mean, let's take it, take, it, take it to other places, you know. What were Asian people doing? They were inventing gunpowder and things like that. Mm -hmm. What were the Middle Easterners doing? Algebra, so we can build things more efficiently and do better engineering. Engineering. What were they doing south of the equator on the other side of the pond? Sitting around looking at their own members grow and chewing betel leaf. They had more natural resources than any other continent on the planet, and yet they're still crapping in holes. Yeah. So, you know, please. <laughs> You're going to get your butt kicked if that's the way you set up your society. You are always going to have a warlord that rules you mm -hmm. or somebody that comes in with better stuff that uses it against you. So enjoy your Indigenous Peoples Day. Indigenous Peoples Day. And for those of you who live in Indigenous Peoples Nation, by the way, we remember are... that we're here to help you when your nation runs afoul of things and you need, like, the FBI. We kind of laugh and snicker and we go in and, and officially, remind ourselves to shut up and get back in the truck. Officially speaking, and you can thank John Bell Edwards for this one, Louisiana is among 15 states who officially observe Indigenous Peoples Day yeah. instead of Columbus Day. Why swap one for the other? If, if, if Columbus Day is no longer a good thing, just drop it. Well, Columbus was bad because he was European. Just drop it. 
He's bad. Yeah. White European man. is bad. White man bad. Yeah. White man. Well, he's, he was he was Italian, so he's like me. He was like kind of can man. Yeah. But you know, he, he wasn't pasty like you. Swarthy. Swarthy. <laughs> That's it. Swarthy. <laughs> we like to think of it as uh, well, you continental. Know. To me, I, I don't understand why we have to swap Columbus Day for Indigenous Peoples Day. If Columbus Day is bad, and Columbus is bad, and Columbus's heritage is bad, then just drop it. Just, well, you know, you know, all but you know what that you know what that means? That means bank employees don't get an extra day off. It, it, again, this is such a shut up and get back in the truck. This is the king, queen, and emperor of shut up and get back in the truck. Okay? First of all, no governor of any state should proclaim Indigenous Peoples Day. They got their own damn country, right? Mm -hmm. They can proclaim it. They can sit around the old campfire and smoke half a tree and have a good old time. They can proclaim it. And by the way, in terms of revenue, science, mm -hmm. inventions, technology, what have we gotten? Historically, from the indigenous peoples. Zippity doo da, a zippity a. Kachina dolls. My were awesome. oh my, what a crappy ass day. You know, wow. I, I mean, you, you. I mean, hey, you think Harvard? Bill, you know you are you are you are right. You are walking the edge of of the of the racism fence, man. No, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Do you think Harvard, MIT? Stanford, you think they were you think they were founded as a research facility and, and higher education platform? Plenty of Native Americans by have these gone on people to accomplish great things. Yeah, but by percentage, it's minuscule. Well, that's because by percentage, the Native Americans are people who uh, are, are more natural. They cling to the land and they cling to their to their you know ancient ways. Well that's fine. That's that's okay. They can do that. Mm -hmm. But, they're like know, hippies. But while they're pulling Only lint, the while they're pu pulling lint out of their navel and wonder if it'll work in the pipe with the with the with the ganja, you know, the rest of us should sit here and, and try to 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 keep the economy moving and support things. Mm -hmm. This is the biggest shut up and get back in the truck I have ever heard in my life. <sighs> now then, a brief break. Happy Columbus Day. Yeah, Happy Colombo Day. The world of entertainment lost. One of the greats. I'll share that with you on the other side of the break here. This is Exiles TV. We'll be right back. and appliances. You're dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable independent with nationwide buying power.
<laughs> Hello. Welcome back to Exiles TV. As I mentioned, uh, the world of entertainment uh, is mourning the loss of one of the greats. Uh, the name might not mean anything to you, Margaret Nolan. Margaret Nolan passed away. She was 76 years of age. Margaret Nolan, <clears throat> everybody remembers uh, from the film Goldfinger. Mm hmm. As Dink, the girl that Sean Connery met uh, when he was uh, first circling around uh, Goldfinger at a resort in, I think it was Miami Beach. Yeah. Yep. Dink was the woman who wound up painted head to toe in gold paint. And that and then the cause of her. death was asphyxiation because her pores could not breathe. Mm -hmm. But um, it was a very daring shot to have this woman, obviously nude woman, with her uh, her her bottom only covered by a sheet uh, and a small piece of sheet painted head to toe in gold. Mm -hmm. But uh, Margaret Nolan, she was a beautiful uh, young woman. But uh, probably her most memorable role uh, was Dink. What's going on behind my back? That was a different movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She also uh, uh, appeared uh, in the Beatles movie Help. Actually, I'm sorry. I, may, I got that wrong. Shirley Eaton was the woman who was covered in gold from head to toe. No, no. Dink was not the one who wound up being covered in, in gold. Margaret Nolan it was Shirley the gold Eaton played the gold-painted yeah. Bond girl in the Sean Connery film. Well, this uh, Associated Press report uh, that they... Re, re, uh, uh, took from Variety, said it was Margaret Nolan. Was yeah, one Margaret was Nolan painted. appeared painted gold in the opening sequence. Ah, but she wasn't the one that was as killed by, in the movie. Exactly. There we go. As shot by, by the way, all those opening sequences and all those were uh, filmed by a guy named Otto Binder. <laughs> really? Yeah, I know too much about James Bond films, way too much. Otto, Otto Binder. But... Uh, that's, she was a blonde girl next door type and uh, definitely lovely. And I, here's a photo of her. I'm not going to spin the thing around like I do sometimes. Here's a photo of her at about 76. And she was a very pretty 76 year old woman. So, yeah. Margaret Nolan, God rest ye. You know, again, we are getting to the age where a lot of these people that were iconic in some of our first film experiences are now getting up in years and passing away. Mm -hmm. And you know what I don't like doing? I don't like looking at the picture of them from two or three years ago. I want to see the photo from their, their big role. I, I don't know why that is. I, I, uh, when, um, uh, well, I can't remember her name, played Emma Peel uh, when she passed away two weeks ago. Diana Rigg. When Diana Rigg passed away. Mm -hmm. I, I, it just absolutely freaked me out to look at a picture of her that was taken three years ago. Oh my goodness, though. One of her last roles was in Game of Thrones, and she was a force mm -hmm. to be reckoned with in that film, uh, that I, series. She was incredible. And yeah, she didn't look like Mrs. Peel, because she was, you know, up in her early 80s, but uh, I guess she I just still uh, 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 was an actress of substance. I, I just don't, I guess I don't like facing my own aging. Now, this is an well, that says a lot. This is an interesting story from right here in Baton Rouge. On, uh, on Sunday, an 11-year-old. From our little bastard file. <laughs> <laughs> stole a school bus and took it on a long drive with officers in pursuit mm. from Scotlandville to Central. He hopped aboard about 11 o'clock in the morning yesterday. Uh, it was parked at Progress Head Start, apparently, and he took it on a half-hour joyride. He managed to crash it into Green a tree on Greenville Springs Road. It hit a gas line and then a tree. Uh, now, what is interesting is all the local news media here in Baton Rouge, and probably Lafayette, New Orleans, have it as well. They have pictures of this young man being taken into custody. And since he is facing away from the camera, they can publish these pictures. This kid is about three foot nothing. Yeah, he's wee. I don't know how he managed to operate the officer that he's is... He's probably sitting right on the edge of the driver's seat. The officer that is speaking to him is on his knees... And, and looking at this kid's chin. So it's like, how, how would he do that? 
I would have thought the officer has his knee and the child's back. No, on his neck. No, no. <laughs> that, it, it, uh, the BRPD and the sheriff's office were both involved in this. Um, I saw some footage that somebody had shot from their cell phone just as it was mm -hmm. like they had to wait out a green light because this kid was running a red with about nine cop cars behind him. And uh, the kid seemed to be handling the bus just fine. Isn't that amazing? But how, were, how old were you when you first drove a motor vehicle? How old was I when, when I you first, first drove a motor vehicle? Uh, 13. 12. 12? So, you know, I mean, it can be done. Yeah. Now, I drove it on a private road on my grandparents' farm with my father sitting like we were on a date ready to grab both the wheel and slam on the brake should it be necessary. Mm -hmm. First thing he made me do, by the way, was back up. <laughs> that was scary at, at my age. But, but yeah, uh, the, the stealing the school bus thing is a new wrinkle, though. Well, school buses generally aren't locked. They, they can't lock because of the nature of that folding door. But where, you know, where were the keys? Were the keys just like under the, you know, under the sun flap? Or is it, you know? Watch us find out that he, watch us find out he, he, he hot-wired it. He boosted it with a screwdriver in the ignition. <laughs> Kids got skills. Yeah. Mad skills, oh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that. That was fun. Um, the the cell phone the, the cell phone video shot by the motorist was entertaining, because they're like what what, and then they stop, and uh, here comes the here comes the bus. I, I just don't know what what's going to happen when this kid goes to court. The judge is going to like, did you do this? And the kid's like, yes, your honor. Why? I don't know. Yeah, that's always. I mean, I don't know. You could have sent an 11 year old to juvenile detention for two or three years because of this? Hell no. I'm going to send him for training in NASCAR. <laughs> yeah. Teach him how not to wreck that thing the next time. Yeah, other than that little incident at the end, he apparently was fairly yeah. skilled. He could be, uh, you know, he could be the next junior. This kid's you know, oh. obviously got some skills. A brief, a brief break, as they say. And we're back with more in just a moment on Exiles TV. Stick around. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2 as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. You could be driving. 
Yeah. Right now, during the Team Honda Upgrade event, get a new 20 Accord Sport for just $309 a month with no money down, no first payment, and no security deposit. It's time to upgrade to your new Honda at Louisiana's number one new car dealer, Team Honda on Sea and Lane. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Exiles TV, glad to have you along with us this morning. More to come uh, as we get into uh, another element here. Uh, we're going to be talking in just a few minutes with uh, political pollster John Kuvion with JMC Analytics. But first, something I want to tell you about that's something that's coming on your ballot on November 3rd. Are you tired of the endless roller coaster of fiscal cliffs? On November 3rd, you can change that by voting yes on Constitutional Amendment 4. Yes on four means a stable budget process and job growth for Louisiana. Vote yes on Constitutional Amendment 4. This message paid for by Pelican Action. For more information, you can visit pelicanaction.org. And there you go. We'll be telling you about that more and more as we continue toward Election Day. Uh, and Kevin, did you see the story about yet another accidental shooting that ended up in a fatality here now, locally. Yeah, and, and I mean, I'm, I I hate to be flippant about it, but well, yeah. I'm losing, I am I am losing uh, confidence in the accidental part of these Was shootings. This the shooting on Jackson Avenue. Yeah, a 71 year old man is dead after what is being declared an accidental shooting. Jacory Jelks, 18 years old, was arrested. He fatally shot Sidney Smith around 4 p.m. He said he was manipulating a rifle that fired. He struck himself in the thumb, and he struck Smith in the head in the front yard of his home. Smith was dead at the scene. Jelks was booked into Parish Prison for negligent homicide, illegal use of a weapon, and obstruction of justice. Okay, I'm curious about that obstruction of justice part. Oh, yeah. That means he tried to lie about it. Or he tried to dump the weapon. Uh, you know, tried or, to cover it up in some way, shape, or form. And then, of course, if, you, if you're caught trying to cover it up or dump the weapon or whatever, then what's the next thing you say? It was an accident. It was an accident. Well, I mean, I, this is the third or fourth... Um, that has happened in East Baton Rouge Parish in the last two weeks, these accidental shootings. Now, one of them was one child who shot their sibling in the car while mom was in a store. Mm -hmm. I, don't get me started on that story uh, about leaving guns in your car along with your little bitty kid. Yeah, that's just insane. Yeah. But um, I, I, I just... I'm just wondering when we're going to start taking a, a little bit of a turn into these quote unquote accidental shootings uh, and find out that they maybe aren't quite so accidental at all. Not that the, not that the shot that hit the man was an accidental, well, the fact but that the handling the, of the weapon negligently there's, with people around. The fact that there's an obstruction of justice charge as well tells me they haven't gotten to the truth of this thing yet. Yeah. So, and there but was... Is it just me, or has the, has the gun violence calmed down a bit? A I mean, bit. we had weekends where, you know, 10 people would get shot over the course of a weekend. Now, I know we had a little hurricane on, on Friday night, but, uh, you know, it was a somewhat quiet weekend in Baton Rouge. I mean, you know, we had juvenile and a bus and, you know, good stuff like that, but... It, for a while, it was not unusual that you would come, you know, come to the news on Monday morning and you'd find out that five, six, seven people had been shot over the weekend, some fatally. 
So I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but it seems like the the guys who play with guns are playing with them a little bit less. Well, I, I also think that we have a very, very big push to, as they say, get guns off the street. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that that is, is meeting with some success. There is something that I'm going to try to find out a little bit more about and perhaps ask our DA Hiller Moore to come on with us. There was a very, very short article, uh, I believe it was yesterday, in The Advocate. Uh, Hiller Moore has asked for a declaration of public nuisance against Tiger Plaza apartments. Really? Now, I, I know that Hiller Moore would not do anything that he doesn't have the illegal authority to do. I mean, he's a, a, a by-the-book kind of guy. But I don't recall in my entire time here in Baton Rouge any public official ever invoking public nuisance laws. And I don't know what that means can happen next. Uh, and as I said, it was a, it was a very, very uh, a short little article. But Tiger Plaza Apartments has had more than 400 police calls in one 365-day period. Good Lord. That's as bad as some schools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a joke. But uh, the DA says that... Uh, he is taking action by declaring them a nuisance. Now, what that really means is that eventually they can be brought into court and a judge could order the Tiger Plaza apartment complex shut down. Yes. And what about all the residents? They are going to have to find other places to live. Yep. Uh, this other little bit of news, uh, this is a uh, in the age of COVID-19, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the Angola prison has announced that the rodeo, which is every weekend in October, mm -hmm. postponed indefinitely. Um, visitation of all kinds has been suspended at the state-run prisons, which puts Angola, the rodeo, in limbo. The announcement from the department last late last week says all prison visitation, tours, and volunteers have been suspended for 30 days Additionally, the spring prison rodeo has been suspended indefinitely. That is an amazingly popular event. Now, nowhere in this article that I'm reading on WBRZ's website is COVID-19 mentioned, nor is any other reason for the suspension. It just says, in lieu of visitation, the department is working to expand access to telephone services to ensure that inmates have continued connection to family and friends. But what is the reason for Angola and the State Department of Corrections to suspend all visitation statewide? Do you think it's COVID or do you think it's something else? Well, maybe we ought to call our buddy Kenny Pastorick over there. And see if he wants DOC to. DOC and see what he has see to what say. He wants to come and tell us. This uh, is a big event, a big autumn event for October for a lot of people. A lot of people do not miss it. I got some good news from my friends over at one of the more popular recurring festivals the Louisiana Renaissance Festival, which runs for six weekends mm -hmm. during October and November, um, excuse me, November, December, they have been given per permission from the governor's office to open. Um, everyone is going to have to mask. Social distancing is going to have to be observed, but because it's largely outdoors, the governor's office has said, yes, you can, you can open up. Well, again, this that's is gotten a very, very, very popular. Very profitable festival. I mean, it's it makes a, a, a ton of money, uh, both for the Hammond area and uh, in state to tax revenue, and uh, it's the sort of thing that having to shut it down altogether for one season could threaten its continued existence altogether. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you've never been to one of these Renaissance festivals, they build these grounds up with permanent structures, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and if there's uh, if there's nobody coming to them, there's no reason to leave them up. It's in uh, uh, Tangipahoe Parish? It's just east of Hammond, Tangipahoe Parish, not far from the what they call the new Hammond High School. But it draws people from all over the south. It draws people from... Texas, Arkansas. Oh, yeah. Uh, because these, these what they, uh, Rennies or Ren Geeks, whatever you want to call them, they, they're looking for festivals to go to. 
and big or small, they will travel to, to, to go to them. Some of them even actually prefer the quote unquote smaller festivals to the big ones like um, the Texas Renaissance Festival is probably one of the biggest there is in the nation. It's like 58 acres. It's, it's massive, it's sprawling. And it's been there for over 30 years. And uh, it, it makes tens of millions of dollars a year. Uh, the Louisiana Festival by comparison, it's kind of small, kind of more intimate. But uh, again, one season where they weren't allowed to have the festival at all could, could be a, you well, know, a I'm, death punch. I'm glad to hear festivals particularly those that are mostly outdoors, coming, I don't, coming back online. There's so many things about the continued shutdown, the phase 2.2 with Governor Edwards, I just don't understand. I don't understand the 11 o'clock closing time for the bars. I don't understand why outdoor events can't happen. Uh, you know, we, we're all conditioned to wear the mask even when we are outside. Um, I, I, I don't understand some of the restrictions. Is it just, you know, because the beatings will continue until morale improves, I, I don't really understand it. I, I think there is such a thing as too much caution, and I think we're seeing it with some of this. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm tired of hearing that expression. Out of an overabundance of caution. It's like well, you're admitting yourself, you're being a pussy about it. Well, you know, uh, there, there are certain people that admire, um, shall we say, a large amount of caution. I, I think there are people that say we should be a little more mathematical and a little more prudent about it. I happen to be one of those. Meanwhile, have you read the latest releases from the WHO? The WHO, who? the World Health Organization, who, who, thank you, says the lockdowns are not helping. It's time to reopen yeah. and get people out there and let them mingle and get a little herd immunity yeah, I, going I, on. I, I did see that. I, I, I did see who that. Who do you believe? What do you believe? Well, here's an interesting little health-related statistic. This is alarming. There has been an increase in alcohol-related deaths of 51% across the United States. 85% increase in deaths from alcohol abuse in women. In women. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about you know, somebody in a sorority house that binge drinks and they don't make it up off the couch. We're talking about long-term alcoholism causing serious health consequences from which liver you, damage. You cannot recover. Mm -hmm. Eighty-five percent in the last seventeen years. It's amazing. So what's up with that? Speaking of percentages, when we return from this break, we're going to talk about some uh, polling percentages. Uh, John Cuvion, JMC Analytics and Polling, is our guest. That's coming up next on Exiles TV. and appliances. You're dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable independent with nationwide buying power. By all standards, he is a champion for consumers. Because of Public Service Commissioner Eric Spremetta, our utility rates are 35% less than the national average, the lowest in all of America. He saved ratepayers over $8 billion. Commissioner Scrametta brought us more reliable power plants and energy efficient solar fields. Public Service Commissioner Eric Scrametta, keep the commissioner who keeps our rates low. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After 5 Tuxedos. 
We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with the Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. Hey, we're back. This is Exiles TV. Bill Profito over there. I'm Kevin Gallagher and the man joining us in the middle, John Cuvion, JMC Analytics and Polling. So, a pollster. And demographer. And demographer. Uh, John, it's awful good to see you again. How yeah. are you? Mm -hmm. So you have been doing some polling on the uh, mayor president's race in East Baton Rouge Parish. Do you want to start with that, or where would you like to begin? I could speak in glittering generalities since the poll will, for will formally be released. Glittering generalities. I like, I like glittering that. generalities. Uh, tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow night is the debate, mm -hmm. and then Wednesday morning I think they're doing the full release of everything. But the glittering generalities I can tell you about the mayor's race, and actually this kind of segues into some other remarks I have about the mayor's race. You have to think of the mayor's race in terms of the swim lanes. In other words, East Baton Rouge Parish is roughly a 50-50 parish politically number one. Mm -hmm. It does lean slightly Democratic nowadays. I fully expect Joe Biden will carry this parish. Hillary Clinton carried it by nine points. I would not personally be surprised to see a 15-point margin for Joe Biden this November because you have a lot of defections from suburban Republicans. Ah. And I'm seeing it not just here in Baton Rouge, but across the nation. I'm seeing it in Shreveport. I'm seeing it in Lafayette. I'm seeing it in Jefferson Parish. Point being is whatever, whatever Trump's underperformance was in some of these more affluent, well-educated areas, that number is going to be even worse this year just kind of set the stage. Now, is that because of, of, of some attractive point of the Democratic candidate, or is it more of the never Trump? It's, it's his persona. <clears throat> they hate him. Yes. He's it's just his not persona. a good guy. I'll give you a perfect example of kind of the slide I'm seeing. Give you, uh, so there was a legislative poll I was doing in Tennessee. It was in an area that voted over 60% for Mitt Romney, a 20-point plus margin for Mitt Romney. Trump carried it by a 10-point margin. Joe Biden's carrying it by a 10-point margin now. And that's not just isolated into this one area of Tennessee. And I'll just say it's in an urban city. I'm seeing that kind of thing happening in Shreveport, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, Jefferson Parish, other places where you have a substantial constituency of white collar and or educated people. Not so much in the rural areas, although I could say that whatever his number was in 2016, he's running at about 95 to 97% of that now. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the stage I think is appropriate to talk about the mayor's race, because you have, in my opinion, roughly a 52 to 55 percent Democratic vote here in East Baton Rouge Parish, where whatever Joe Biden gets, you can take that vote roughly, give or take a couple percentage points, divide it up amongst Mayor Sharon Weston Broom and her challenger on the Democratic side, Denise Marcel. Denise Marcel is probably going to get, in my opinion, about 10 percent of the vote, which in today's climate means more likely than not we will have a runoff in the mayor's race that goes to December. Mm -hmm. That's the Democratic side. Now, on the Republican side, you basically have three people competing for that remaining 45 to 47 to 48 percent of the vote and throw in another percent or two for E. Eric Gayrard. So what you're talking about is that Steve Carter and, and Matt Watson start off the front runners, and then, but then Jordan Piazza is certainly not going to take that line down, and so I expect he's going to start, you know, 
competing, uh, doing competing messaging and so forth against Carter and Watson. But what I think is also telling, this is the second part of the mayor's race that I think is important to appreciate. In my opinion, the most important campaign finance report that can be released in one of these types of races is the 30-day report. In other words, you're required to release reports on a specified schedule that the Board of Ethics prescribes. Mm -hmm. In the case of the mayor's race, there's still additional reporting that has to come, but the 30-day report to me is very important because it's basically telling the handicappers, hey, going into the home stretch, here's who has the money and here's who doesn't. Here's who doesn't. Mm -hmm. What I found highly instructive, now the last report that was released was back in the summer. I didn't really expect to see and did not see much from that because people had just gotten started. There really wasn't much money around other than what the mayor had. But now that we're going into the home stretch, so to speak, what I'm seeing is this. Mayor Sharon Weston Broom starts off with $355,000 cash on hand, which is a pretty good cushion to have going into the final In few weeks. In a mayor's race, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Denise Marcel is sitting on 48000 cash on hand. Then we go to the Republicans. Steve Carter, granted he jumped in at the last minute, he has 200000 cash on hand. Oh. Followed by Jordan Piazza with 31000 and Matt Watson with 15000 Now. 15000 to me is barely enough to run a red legislative race, much less a mayor's race. And to me, that is a signal to donors, whether Matt agrees with my opinion or not, that he doesn't have the money to go into the home stretch. But I think what's also equally important when you're talking about the mayor's race is not just how much money they have sitting in their bank to go into the final stretch for all the ads and so forth, but how much have they been burning? In other words, for every $100 they're raising, how much are they spending? Because the closer you get to the end of the campaign cycle, you're doing a lot more spending than you are raising. In the beginning of the campaign cycle, of course, you're doing, or you better be doing, a lot more raising than you are spending. Having given you that kind of context, when I look at the burn rate of all the five major candidates, Sharon Weston Broom has burned 73%, but she has money to burn, so that's not a debilitating thing. Denise Marcel burned 74%, again, about the same. But here's where it gets really interesting. Steve Carter, granted he started late, but he's been stockpiling money left and right. He has a 9% burn rate, meaning for every $100 he's raised, he spent nine. So basically, he's running meat, lean and mean, saving up for the final He's going to have a broadside is what he's going to have. Mm -hmm. And then we get into Jordan Piazza and Matt Watson. Jordan Piazza has a 76% burn rate, so even though it was impressive that he raised $114,000, he spent 87 of it. So he's got 31,000 sitting around. Now, he may very well have another 100 or 200,000 that's falling down like proverbial manna from heaven right now, but the thing is the average donor or handicapper who's looking at that number saying, he only has $31,000 to play with. Now, then we get to Matt Watson, and this, by the way, was the subject of some unfavorable newspaper publicity recently. He has an 112% burn rate, meaning that he raised 26000 and he spent twenty nine. So he's basically running on fumes. And the thing that I think is important to appreciate is, given that East Baton Rouge is a large parish, this is very much a parish where you have to campaign by media. Oh, and by the way, all the social distancing and COVID regulations kind of discourage having crowds. So your options are very much limited unless you want to go the media route. If you don't mind my interrupting your you train may. of thought here, uh, it is a media market, particularly for big races like the mayor's race. Mm -hmm. I have seen so very little yes. open media. You know, you're talking about what they've spent and I'm not so sure I can wrap my head around it's been spent where. mostly on printing that I can see. Yeah. I've seen a number of billboards. Yeah. And I know those are clicking off at probably between fifteen hundred and three thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's multiples of them. I've only seen one television commercial for the incumbent. Mm -hmm. I have seen one for Denise Marcel. Yes. I have seen no TV for Matt Watson. Yep. I have not, now it doesn't mean it's not happening, but I'm, it means they're not buying sufficient gross rating points to where right. I'm seeing it. And here's the thing, I will go way out on a limb and strongly disagree with the prevailing 
thought amongst media people. So the prevailing thought is you start on November 3rd, work your way backwards. So I think that's a bad idea for two reasons. Number one, people are going to be voting earlier. In fact, they're early voting now, turning in mail-in ballots. Mm -hmm. That's even before we're talking about mm -hmm. in-person early voting Friday. So you need to be establishing your name recognition now. Number two, if you're doing the proverbial wait till November 3rd and back your way up, you're going to be spending money in late October and early November when there's going to be a lot of other ads on it's the TV. It's going to be TV. very crowded. Right. So in other words, no one's going to care about your ad on November 1st, whereas right now people are making their formative opinion. And if all you're seeing are 90% Bill Cassidy ads, 2% Adrian Perkins ads, and so forth, well, guess who's getting the lion's share of media attention? Bill Cassidy. Mm -hmm. Whereas to me, if you're a mayoral candidate, you need to be putting up ads yesterday. Well, I think it's been very difficult for a lot of these folks to raise money. It has. It's a tougher climate. And uh, when you're talking about electronic media, mm -hmm. you have to, what we call in the business, buy deep. You can't buy one a week. Right. You better be buying 15 or 20 a week Repetition on your network your stations. Friend. Right. You know, uh, and, and I, do, I don't think, I think because they're starting on November 3rd and counting backwards, which I agree with you. Yeah. And when I used to do advertising for politicals, I never embraced that theory. Right, it's bad. I said, come out very very strong like you are the like you own these TV networks yep and then go go to maintenance and then come back strong again mm -hmm. but I just don't think a lot of these folks have got the cheese to sustain yeah and we we've, we've already learned in in Louisiana that oh if I just make it to the runoff then the donations are going to start pouring in yeah that's not always how it works right ask Eddie Rasponi mm -hmm. right well, the other thing, too, is I do agree that money is harder to come by, but my attitude about that is, okay, be creative. Use radio, use digital, mail, whatever. You don't ne Use the exiles. <laughs> we have a political rate card. You don't necessarily have to go on TV if you don't have the money for it, but point being is we are a parish that is probably when the, vo the voter rolls close, have 300,000 registered voters. You got to find some way to reach them, period. We have now, with social media, there are alternatives. Yeah. You can get your message out there on social media at relatively no and sometimes low and sometimes no cost. Yes. And then there are programs like this where, you know, if you, if you call us, we're going to put you on. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and that's, that's free. Yeah. Well, that's... Well, and yet, I'm not seeing candidates take advantage of that. Well, I'm going to again go way out on a limb here, as I'm fond of doing. I think candidates aren't really aware of the new reality. More specifically, what I'm talking about is this. Historically in Louisiana, 3% have voted by mail. In the July primary, that surged to 19%. It surged to 24% in August. In other words, you're going to start having an avalanche of mail coming in this week, next week, and so forth. And I think a lot of people are still thinking, oh, well, everyone's going to vote on Election Day. Well, no. In the governor's race, by the way, 30% voted early in person and 3% voted in mail. Before we take our break, and we yes. will do that in just a second, one of the things that a lot of these candidates, and more importantly their advisors, don't realize yeah. is that when it comes to fundraising, you look at numbers and you say, everybody says they're for real because they've raised so much money. Yeah. Same thing with television. They're for real because they're on television. Mm -hmm. And if they ignore that, they do that at their own peril. Yes. A brief break. We will return with John Cuvion right after this on Exiles TV. Dr. Farrell Frugé Jr. and I am a general dentist at Frugé Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. 
In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Right now, choose any new 20 Mazda and get 0% for 60 months, plus 90 days deferred payments during the Team Mazda Upgrade event happening now at Team Mazda on Airline. Hi, business owners. Phase three. Woohoo! But do your customers know you're back? Well, that's where the Clarence Bug Show and Pelican Broadcasting can help. Right now, we've got great rates on advertising packages to help you get the word out. Shoot me an email at bugsclarence at gmail.com. Or better yet, call me up. I'd love to talk with you. 225-485-6839. Let's get together and make phase three the best it can possibly be. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. TV. I'm Bill Perfita. He's Kevin Gallagher. We're going to continue with our guest John Covion from JMC Analytics. But first, I need to tell you something about one of the amendments that's coming up on your ballot November 3rd. That one. That one. Are you tired of the endless roller coaster of fiscal cliffs? Well, on November 3rd, change that and vote yes on Constitutional Amendment 4. Yes on 4 means a stable budget process and job growth for Louisiana. Vote yes on Constitutional Amendment 4. This message paid for by Pelican Action. For more information, visit pelicanaction.org. And we thank you for that. Now back to our guest, John Cuvion. John, you want to talk a little bit about the presidential race? Love to. I think what's important to appreciate right now is, so I've been following things in addition just to what the candidates are saying and the debates and the polling. I'm looking more deeply into such things as early voting and what party primary turnout was and things like that. One of the things I have seen from the beginning, and it has become amplified since then, I'm seeing extraordinarily strong democratic enthusiasm of the level of I have not seen since 2008. Mm -hmm. And what does not help President Trump is that when I've been following the polls, whatever you want to say about the veracity or not of them, the, the, the problem he has is this. He started off with 46% of the national popular vote four years ago. I don't believe I've seen him exceed 43% in any poll average. And by the way, I've been every Friday morning, I make it a point to go to 538, grab the poll averages for national and swing states and compare them to the previous week. After the Republican convention, President uh, Joe Biden rather was sitting on an eight-point lead. It is now a 10-point lead. Now, a 10-point lead is bad enough if you're a Republican, but the bigger problem is this. When I show that you have, as of this morning, 83 million people have requested a mail-in ballot, and that is based off of a denominator of 137 million who voted four years ago, and 10 and a half million have already voted, which is about eight, nine percent of the level of those who voted in 2016, the race is being resolved now, and I'm seeing these massive run-ups in the early vote numbers. And then, of course, Georgia started today. Tennessee, North Carolina, and Texas are going on board this week. We in Louisiana are going on board Friday, and so on and so forth. What this means in plain terms is the presidential election is reaching a conclusion now. And if you think but that... But yet it's not, because there's going to be the matter of all those mail-in votes and contesting the mail-in oh, votes. Oh, right, right, This right. thing's going to go on for right. weeks. Right, well, let me, let me put it this way. In terms of being able to reach a voter and change his or her mind, I'm mm -hmm. not talking about the ultimate disposition of the mail-in ballots. You're correct. Some of the swing states... We've all made up our minds. Yeah, we've made up our minds. And you see, the problem that you referred to, which is, by the way, a very good kind of distant early warning, and I've been telling people this since June, 
is that you have some states that have really strict laws about when you can start opening up the mail and ballots and doing all your pre-processing. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about a state like Pennsylvania, where right now I know of 2.5 million mail-in requests, and I think about 250,000 have already voted, it's going to take time to process that. But anyway, getting to the main point, though, you're talking about a 10-point poll deficit, and you have, a th you have three weeks to fix that. In other words, you got to come up three, three points in the polls every week. And until I see some coherent messaging from the Trump campaign, I don't even know if he could pull it up one point. Well, I, I did see a new, and we, we were, we've just got a minute and a half left. Yeah. Uh, I did see a new national commercial for President Trump last night. And it was better messaging, in my opinion, than he has done in the past. Yeah. So we'll see what they've got up their sleeves. I'm going to guess, uh, as we leave it here, we always talk about the money. Mm -hmm. They both have plenty to spend. Uh, Biden a lot more than Trump, because it turns out that the supposed bi billion dollar Death Star, whatever they were calling it, they're basically canceling ad buys in major states. And that, to me, is a, not a good sign for the Trump campaign, whereas Biden is turning up the volume in all these swing states, and he's going all out. How much PAC money is going to be involved? Real quick, John. Oh, gosh, hundreds of millions easily. All right, John Cuvion with JMC Analytics. By the way, you can visit him online. He does a lot of newsletters and things. Winwithjmc.com, correct? Yes. And we thank all of you for being with us today. Again, we will be back tomorrow uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, is Scheduled to talk to Steve Carter, candidate for mayor president of East Baton Rouge Parish. One of the persons whose name we didn't take in vain. We just mentioned it today. Steve Carter will be with us tomorrow. And, of course, we'll take a look at what is going on in our world and your world as we begin for everybody without power we are hoping for the best for you and uh, we're going to be watching recovery efforts in the devastation of delta clarence bugs is coming up next right here you can watch us again at 10 p.m by the way thanks for joining us this morning for everybody out there stay well and may god bless hey don't forget the pelican broadcasting page on youtube view it on demand